What up fight world it's your boy Ego and I'm back with some more boxing So if you've seen my last couple videos you've heard a little bit of ranting So fuck it why don't we just keep it up I want to talk about some other bullshit that I've seen today And it's regarding Kid Chocolate Peter Quillen And an interview he did with IFL So shout out to the whole UK Shout out to IFL for the coverage And what he said in that interview I didn't like I'm going to put the link in the description so you can watch it and be the judge for yourself But they were asking him, Coogan was asking him questions, regular questions the fans want to know, so some good questions about why he vacated his title and seeing Andy Lee get his title, um, which became vacant by knocking out Korobov. And I just didn't like it. Like, I'm not trying to act like I know more than, you know what I'm saying, the next person or I could read into people, but I'm a people person. His whole demeanor to me did not seem like the demeanor of a fighter. He didn't seem like he had the hunger. He seemed like he was chilling. He has a family, and he not tripping about titles. So I don't know if he was trying to mask the pain, but this is what he said. Triple G, his name is there, but the money and the business behind him is not equaling up to each other. Gennady Golovkin is looking for a payday too. The name doesn't really bring much to the table besides a high-risk fight with a low reward. Just saying to a bunch of fans, I beat Gennady Golovkin. That's all it really does. I'm not thinking like that. I'm not thinking of beating this guy because of the fans. The fans only do so much for you. Like, well, I don't know, man. A former champion, someone who, it's not like you lost and got beat and removed out of your championship belt. But a guy who gave up his title. So, you know what I mean? Technically, you would have still been a champion. At this time, it's not like, like I said, like someone stripped you of your titles, like Miguel Cotto stripped Sergio Martinez of his titles by beating him. That didn't happen to you. And you're saying shit like that. The only good is is to say I beat Gennady Golovkin. That's all it really does. And I'm not, I'm not doing it because of the fans, basically. The fans only do so much for you. I think that's pretty shitty to say. And there's a lot of people who are in your corner and... You know what I'm saying? You never really turn it on the fans. That's, that's, that's just not a good look. That's like me saying, um, you know what I mean? I, I get into it with some people on the channel and stuff like that, but I respect and support boxing fans. If people come at me crazy and say crazy shit, that's something else. But the fans that just have regular questions, I never treat them less than anything. You know what I mean? I, I try to get back to the questions and, and different things like that. So, to say the fans only do so much, I don't I don't like that, especially from a uh, former champion. I don't like that approach. And to me, I told you, I, I put uh, Peter Quillen on the, the duck list versus the whole middleweight division. Some of you guys are like, oh, he's not ducking. What is this then? You know what I'm saying? He's saying the, the, it's all about money, like the money ain't equaling up, and beating Triple G is only for bragging rights, basically. I don't think that. I think this guy is gaining momentum. He just sold out the stub hub, did like 9,000 plus seats or whatever, fighting Marco Antonio Rubio, who definitely, he doesn't even speak English. He's not no household name. So you know most of the weight from that event comes from Mexican style and, and Triple G style and that kind of thing. So Triple G carried that card. It, don't get me wrong, Nonito Donaire versus Walters was a good fight too, but that's still a lot of it comes from Triple G. There was a lot of people I seen rocking Triple G shirts and saying Mexican style and a lot of interviews and coverage with him. So obviously he's building his brand. So for you to say a win over him doesn't really mean much other than to please the fans, that's pretty shitty. And what is your, your win, your only fight last year or this year against Lucas Konecki? What the fuck does that? You went the distance with a bum that nobody even knows. You know what I'm saying? So what does that win mean for your career or for the fans? Not much. People complain, say, oh, Triple G ain't fought nobody at middleweight. He's overrated. But the the difference is he's fighting. He's fighting multiple times. This man's dad passed away this year, and he still managed. He still, he took a little bit of bereavement earlier in the year, but he still managed to fight three times. And then if you look before that, he fought in November. I think it was late November versus Curtis Stevens and got the stoppage in that fight. So not in a calendar year, but if you look in the last 12 months from uh, Curtis Stevens to Marco Antonio Rubio, within that 12-month window, he had fought four times. 
Curtis Stevens. He had the, the Daniel Gill fight. He fought uh, Marco Antonio Rubio. And he fought Adama earlier, too. And, and he got a stoppage in all those fights. Peter Quillen fought one bum with Al Heyman, and that was it. And, again, Triple G, the people he's fought have been ranked guys. Daniel Gill, former champion. A lot of people thought he won the Darren Barker fight. Controversial. You know what I mean? Shit like that. So, at the very least, even if you think Triple G is overrated, he's still a lot more active than Peter Quillen. You got guys like Curtis Stevens, who called out Peter Quillen. You got guys like Danny Jacobs. They're both from Brooklyn. I thought that was a great fight to make. So, it's not even just about Triple G. It's like, why wouldn't Peter Quillen fight any of those dudes? Now you got other guys who are emerging. David Lemieux. You could have fought Korobov for $1.4 million. And you pass that up. And then if you watch the interview, the last thing I'm going to say, because I'm, I'm done wasting my breath. But the last thing I will say about the interview is he doesn't really do a good job of justifying why he gave up his belts. Like, so it just, it sounds real sketch to me. It sounds real suspect. He just gave it up and he was like, oh, yeah, I got to do what I got to do. And it's about my family and things like that. Another thing is uh, Peter Quillen will be playing Roger Mayweather in a movie. They're doing a biopic. And um, I guess they needed the Roger Mayweather character. So Peter Quillen will be playing Roger Mayweather. And I don't know, maybe he's gone to Hollywood. Maybe he's on that Victor Ortiz shit where he's getting movie money. So he's probably just in it for money. But to me, he did not sound like a fucking fighter at all. Like he didn't sound like someone who has the desire to be here and proclaim the throne and and go through the guys because you got a guy a killer staring you in the face who says he's open to fighting you and if you watch the duckless video there's audio from the call out and Gennady Golovkin mentioned Peter Quillen too and Sergio Martinez and you're saying a win over him doesn't mean much uh, I think I think the opposite because most people are looking at Triple G as the killer in the division who's been impressively winning and knocking fools out so a win over him really gets you those big paydays. So if it's about money, I feel like these fighters always stress money. The money will come. If you do what you're supposed to do in ring, the fans will respect you for it. And the big fights and the big paydays and all that come. You're not just going to go from Lucas Kaneki to getting 1.4. But if you keep doing the damn thing, you'll get 1.4 or 950000 or or whatever person you're expecting to get. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to just come from wishful thinking and not fighting the right guys. And for the real boxing historians, if you know the original Kid Chocolate, Elio Montalvo, the Cuban Bon Bon, the real Kid Chocolate, the first Kid Chocolate from Cuba, he had over 150 fights, and I think he won over 130 of them. So Peter Quillen is not really staying true to the namesake by fighting one bum a year, you know what I'm saying, versus the original guy who you got your moniker from, you got your name from, had over 150 fights and a ton of wins, 130 plus wins, 135, 136 wins. So you're not really doing that justice right now. Anyway, that's my thoughts. I want to leave it with you. Check out the interview. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like this video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. Mm -hmm.